Okay, what I was saying before the camera went off, <laughs> hopefully, was that right here, um, Eclipse only does what it tells, what you tell it to do. So right here, they misstroked field. This is what they wanted was F-I-E-L-D, but they stroke field as in to touch something. So that's what it put in the context. But it's underlined in red telling you that it's misspelled. It doesn't recognize the spelling. Well, it puts it in auto magic as one of your options because it thinks that's what it what it may be. Also gives you options up here of what you know maybe it could have been. Maybe you meant feel, you know, with with a suffix, but it doesn't put it as the suffix. It only it only puts it up there as is that what you meant? That you you know you accidentally drug the D in field. You know, and that's what you meant was feel. So it's only going to do what it, what you tell it to do. Ending in the field, a typing error occurred, and the faint underlining in red is calling that to your attention as you type. The correction is also being offered on the Automagic list. Just press nine. Automagic also integrates type over tracking. My Steno for technological and my Steno for tool are very close to one another. So I tend to replace one of these words with the other. Eclipse tracks that type over, and Automagic offers it as a choice. If I press 7, that makes the correction. And here again, Automagic is watching for punctuation that might need to be inserted. One last correction here. Let's assume that this is not misspelled, but the reporter didn't have an alphabet that included hyphens. Pressing 3 would stitch with hyphens. Pressing 4 would actually correct the spelling, if I just go back, pressing 3 would now stitch this spelling. These are just some of the ways that Automagic takes advantage of the spelling checker and type over tracking features built into Eclipse. Okay, we talked about this before class started. One of the students had a question about how you do stitching. Well, that's kind of one of the ways that you do it. So like when they're asking you to spell something out, it needs to be stitched. So when they say, you know, can you please state your name and spell it for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Okay, my name is David, D-A-V-I-D. -I -D. Well, the way that we know how to do it is D period, A period, V period, I period, D period. Well, it doesn't always know that you need to stitch it because you put the period, okay? But Automagic knows that when you cap when you cap that letter, that it's it's gonna know, you know what, I think that's what you're trying to do. They ask you to spell something out, so now you need to stitch it, so it gives you that option. Or, did you mean to put it as capital letters, which it did give you that option of putting it just in capital letters. It'll also tell you that maybe the person misspelled it. But if they misspell it, you don't correct it. You put it the way that they said it. Your job is not to correct them. Your job is to take down verbatim what they said, okay? So if they don't know how to spell Lafayette and they misspelled it and only put one T and not the, you know, the two T's and the E and only put it, you know, with just the E-T, uh, Lafayette, and not the T-E at the end, the way that it's supposed to be spelled, you still do it the way that they, Automatic, auto magic is going to give you that option of, hey, you know what, it's misspelled. You know, is this the way, is this what you meant? No, that's the way he or she spelled it. That's the way that it's going in there. I feel like if they misspell it in the rest of the transcripts, they use the same word again. Do you spell it the way they spelled it? Yeah, because especially like on names, you have no idea whether they spell their name David, D-A-V-E-D. You have no idea. Or D-A-V-Y-D. And people are always doing things to names to make their kids, you know, a little bit different or whatever. So they're always changing the spelling a little bit, you know, just to kind of make it more unique. What if it's like a hospital or something? They like spelled it for you and then like and then they use it again if it's spelled differently than what's on the um, title sheet for 
or whatever. The front page. That's a that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I think that I would go through and put the correct after they spelled it. So you sick the misspelling? Yeah. And not necessarily that I would sick it. I'd leave it. I'd leave it the way that it was, the way that she spelled he or she spelled it, <clears throat> the way that they spelled it, <laughs> and just put it the way that they spelled it. And then go through and say they're 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 spelling Christus, Christus Santa Rosa Hospital. Well, it's T U S, and say they spelled it C H R I S T A S, Christus Santa Rosa. Well, she spelled it A S, but through the rest of the thing, she's talking about Christus. Yeah, we went to Christus Santa Rosa. I corrected. I correct it after that, but I wouldn't correct her spe he or she's spelling after that. But that makes sense. Wouldn't sick the misspelling. No. How come? Because it's it's something that she is saying, actually saying she's spelling it out. Okay. Now the sick is when, you know, they say a word, Krista Santa Rosa Hospital. Well, there's only one hospital in the world called Krista Santa Rosa and you can't find it for the life of you. And that job has to get out that night. Or, you know, my, my Aunt Hortensia came, what? So it's more like, well, did I hear that right? Hortensia? I don't know. I've never heard that word before. I have, but maybe you haven't. I don't know, that's what I heard. So I'm gonna spell it out, sick it means that's what I heard. Maybe it's maybe it's correct. Maybe it's not. But you know, like especially like on places, and you guys are at such an extreme advantage, you know, than like I was. Google is probably the best thing they ever made, ever, ever, because you can find out anything, anything. I mean, I had I had just a, a hearing on an appeal just the other day. A lady's at in prison uh, in a in a drug treatment facility, and she's going to a place in Dell Valley, close to Austin. Never heard of it. Promise to God, never heard of it. Type it up, Google, Dell Valley. Uh, what county is that? Harris. No, Harris is Houston. Uh, Anyway, so it gives me the county that it's in, Dell Valley, Austin, uh, Travis County, Travis County. It's like, that's it. Never heard of it. Capital D-E-L, capital V-A, I think it's V-A-L-L-E, Dell Valley. And that's the way she said it. I would have put E-Y if I couldn't have found it, Dell Valley. That's the way it sounds. Incorrect, V-A-L-L-E. So, I mean, Google, amazing. Medications, um, places, people, you can find people on there even, you know, so, and it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't mean that that's necessarily the way that they spelled it. Maybe they spelled Hortensia with a Y-A at the end, you don't know. You just go with kind of the universal spelling and then kind of sick it. So that's why. But if they spell it out, that means that they know the spelling of it. Or they think they do. Or they think they do. Mm -hmm. But they're spelling it out. So they, you know, you have to assume that they know the spelling of it if they're spelling it out. And sometimes they'll, you know, it'll be like um, Del Valley. Well, can you spell that, please? D as in David, E L, V as in Victor, A L L E. How would you do that? Capital D, comma, as in David, comma, and then stitch the rest. D, D hyphen, comma.
great answer. <laughs> I'd have just dropped it off. <laughs> what would you do, Slick? Great answer. I'm bad at this stuff. Hmm? I'm bad at like grammar and stuff. So don't ask me. Well, I mean, who would you ask? What would you do? <laughs> you know, and I think any of them would kind of be correct. You could almost put D, comma, as in David, comma, and then stitch the rest, or D dash, knowing that it, it's still with the other word, comma, as in David, comma, and then stitch the other word. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you could do it either way. I mean, either way would, would be correct and would look good. All right, they're just kind of going through again and kind of giving you examples of prefixes, suffixes. Okay, that's the end of that uh, lesson. Do I need a break? You need a break? Okay. Okay. Did we go over this one? Okay, here we're going to talk about identifying speakers. Extremely important. Extremely. So please pay attention. <laughs> All right. Let's see how Eclipse makes it easy to keep track of speakers track of speakers. In this example, I wrote the word objection, but I didn't have time to identify the speaker. To insert the speaker paragraph, I could either use the speed key, F2, or I could open the format menu and select speaker. If the speaker's name is already on the list, I can select it by either using the mouse to point and click or by pressing the number next to the name. However, when I enter this dialog, Eclipse is ready for me to start typing to add a new name to the list. I could then close the dialog by either pressing the enter key or clicking on the OK button. The name gets added to the speaker list and to my document. As of Eclipse version 4.3, the speaker list offers the option to let you display a seating chart. But this is the topic of a separate visualizer presentation. Way advanced. Way advanced. That's the, the seating chart. Hmm? I haven't even heard of that. Yeah. That's something that you it's use? pretty neat now. I don't. I just know where everybody sits in my courtroom, so I already kind of know. Is it usually the same people in your courtroom? Yeah, there's about 285 different people. Just, That's about how many people we have on our wheel. They just rotate. But I just know that the children's ad litem sits in a certain place, the state's attorney, the DA sits in a certain place, and then um, the moms and dads ad litem sits in a certain place. Now the players are going to be different in every hearing, but I know that that's where they are. So my one, two, three, four speakers are right there. So I already know who they are. And usually the state speaks the most, so they're my number one. So that's the way that I have, have it set up. But I, I think I have that tutorial that he gave me. So <clears throat> we can go through and watch that one, <clears throat> which is actually pretty neat. So I'm going to go through here again and play it again, and, and I'm going to stop it on certain things. And kind of Let's like see how Eclipse see. makes it easy to keep track of speakers. Of speakers. In this example, I wrote the word objection but I didn't have time to identify the speaker. Okay, what, what they're doing here is they, is they didn't have time to do the speaker, so F2 is your speakers. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you in a, in a real transcript. So say right here, I got cut off, somebody else interjected, F2 gives me all of my speakers. Okay, and what's kind of neat is they only give you nine, nine choices, but I have usually 15 sometimes. So what I do is I go in here, highlight this, put change, and I want to change it, and the shortcut is going to be small a. 
So now I'm going to start using letters. Because if you push 11, if you, if you keep numbering it, and I don't know what it'll do. Actually, I've never tried it. Actually, I think I did. And the 1 will give you the speaker 1. So that's why I had to start using letters. So it gives you a shortcut right there. So that's what I want the shortcut to be. Okay? Push OK. Well, you know what? Right there, I want Miss Rayford. old. <laughs> ever, ever gets old. Okay, so I come back in here. F2, it's already defined. I push A. Miss Rayford comes up. See how I did that? Now, is this something you can save under your jobs or is something that's... Okay. You always want to save these things under your job dictionary. Okay, but so they can, each job dictionary can have a different speaker yeah. list. Okay. But like you know, I'm working on a case right now that was three days long. It was three days. Well, they came in and sat in the same place every time. So I had the DA was the same, child's attorney was the same, mom's attorney was the same, dad's attorney was the same. They used a lot of the same lingo. So like when I'm going in to read that job in, I put in that dictionary. It has my seating chart the same. What, what I mean by seating chart is my attorney one, two, three, four were the same. And I used them the same. You have to remember and make sure that they are the same because if, if one day was different, then it's not going to go through. Now you can go through and change your speakers, you know, right here and say, let me see if it'll show up. Oh, it's not going to show up because I just put it in there. But right here, it shows me that's my symbol for the court. Say that was my symbol for attorney one. Well, you know what? I need to go through and change that. F2, attorney one is four. Push four, and it goes in there. And, it's, and it stays in your job dictionary. Okay? But I know that that's not it. That's the court, so it goes through and it does it that way. Make sense? Sure. I'm thinking of something else. Pizza. No. <laughs> um, there was I am. one <laughs> word had like a, a Q underneath um, the attorney's name, and it's just like, why would you why would you use Q instead of the attorney's name? Where was that? On mine? On this? No, I think it was on the video. Okay. okay. Well, let's go through and we'll see. Yeah, that. Oh, okay. Because what they did was, you know, maybe the person who was doing um, the reporting just kind of got frazzled or whatever. This guy stands up, objection, you know, and then the court comes in. What is it about that objection that you disagree with? Well, I mean, you just you're just hitting stuff sometimes, and it's like sometimes you you know you get kind of get frazzled or whatever, and maybe you hit the wrong symbol for the speaker that you were supposed to have, and it came up as the question. No big deal. Put your cursor right here, click on it, hit your F2, the court, pick number one, and it'll put it there. Let me see if I can if I can. Is there a point though when you do names and when you just do Q and A? Like if it's just a deposition, you just pretty much do Q. &A. Yeah. It's, but even in Q and A, you're going to have where in in a deposition they can object to the form of the question. Something that's relevancy. There's only like two or three objections that they can do. Well, nobody rules on it. In a, in a in a deposition, so all they do is get it in the record, so that when they come to court, the judge can rule on it then. So that's the only reason that they do it. But I mean, you can be going along for two hours, and the guy's asking questions, and you think this guy over here is asleep, you know, and then all of a sudden, objection to the form of the question. What? <laughs> I forgot that guy was even there. You know, but you know, you're responsible for it, so I mean you have to hit his symbol 
objection to the form of the question. Maybe you've been going along for two hours and you forgot. You just hit the question just out of, oh, question. Just to, you know, you just start writing. Well, you can fix it later. It's no big deal. As long as you know, you know, who objected or whatever, then, you know, you can go back and fix it. No big deal. When do you know when to put Q and when do you know when to put the court? Like, is that, is that the court speaking in that instance? Yeah. Because you'll know because, one, the court's never going to ask questions. And even if they do, I never put it as question and answer. Unless they do like an in-camera inspection where the judge is going to ask, you know, a kid to come in and, and he's going to question that kid. Then I put it as question and answer. But sometimes he'll, he'll you know, say they're going along and it's like, you know what, y'all aren't asking the right questions. This is what I want to know. I want to know when did you hit that kid? I put court. Well, the witness is like, the witness is the mom, and the mom's on the sand, and she's like, I only hit the kid once. I put it as witness, witness. So it comes up in colloquy, which this is colloquy right here. So it's going to come up like that. So it's going to come up as this. When did you hit the kid? Witness. Um, the child? Your Honor? And he comes back and says, yes. When did you hit that kid? To me, I wouldn't put it in question and answer because the judge really isn't part of the question and answer, if that makes sense to you. Does that make sense? He's asking questions, but I never put it in a question and answer format unless he's the one leading the whole thing. Then, you know, I will. It's kind of it's kind of a little tricky, and, and depending on who you talk to, they may do it a little bit different. This is the way that I feel most comfortable doing it because really it's not... He's not doing, he's doing examination, but he's not really part of the parties. He's the one making the decision. So he's kind of interjecting, asking of the witness, you know, hey, when did these things happen? I need to know this. Well, it happened on a Thursday. Well, what day, what date? Well, May the 3rd. Okay, so then I just, I leave it. This is what's called colloquy right here. It's not question answer. So that's, did that answer your question a little bit? A little bit. So then compared to the one in the video, you would not have put a cue? No, that's not a question. I mean, it's a question, but it's the, it's the judge coming in saying, what are you objecting to? I'm objecting to the form. So Mr. Johnson should be right here. So it's like you didn't have time. I mean, he objected and kind of scared you or, you know, uh, caught you off guard. And you just hit objection, which is good. You want to get the words, you know, and you'll you'll kind of remember because if, if they ask you to read back, it happened in that instance right there. So you'll probably be able to remember who did it. Mr. Johnson, well, this was the court. Well, what is it about that statement that you disagree with? Well, I object to the form. So that's why you wouldn't put it in a question. And we're going to do that. We're going to do... At the, at the end of this little, um, um, at the end of this lesson, I'm going to have people come in and we're going to do a live setting of people talking. One's a court, one's the attorney, one's the other attorney, one's a witness. So kind of like a deposition. And we're going to do like a court, like if it were my court. So you're going to have four different speakers plus the judge. So you're going to have five different speakers. And you're going to go through... And you're going to be able to. You're going to have to be able to put it into either colloquy Q and A. You're going to put your. Um, you're going to know how to put your um, title pages, your appearance pages, your witness pages, and then your certification pages. So when you leave here, you're going to have all of that stuff, and you're going to know how to do it. You're going to know how to do it because it's a block file. So when you put a block file in, you know it's all thar. Your block files come up. Like here, you know, I want to put, you know, my title pages. I do Alt R, T I. My title page is right there. Click on title page. It puts my my title page up there. You're gonna know how to do that. You're not gonna go through and in insert that whole thing. Is that something that's already or is that something you created? Um, it's something that I created. 
um, but everybody has it. And it's in the uniform format rules, so you're, you're gonna have it. So I haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna do it. If I'm gonna put it up on the screen and have you guys go through and fill it in, you know, insert it as a block file file, because I think you need to know how to do it. And, you know, and it, it kind of has, um, I mean, we're getting way off base here, but um, I'm gonna show you. This is what it looks like. But this is what it looks like. So it has these fields in it where you go through and you know you you know you're up here and in hyperkeys you push the E and it takes you to the to the fill in blank. That's what I'm gonna teach you how to do. So I haven't, I haven't decided exactly how we're going to do it. I think, I think we're going to go through and just manually fill it in because uh, you need to know how to do it and put in a blank field in there to where you have this blue space to where you just push the E and it goes in there and then it gives you different options of what you want to do. Okay. Did I answer your question? <laughs> kind of. I think I did. It's just, I don't know when to use Q and A or when to use the colloquy, but I assume I'll learn that in the future. Um, and you will. Um, and a lot of it is... Um,